It's time now for Media Watch with uh, James Creed. And James, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, ma'am. We're starting, of course, with this really upsetting story, the death of, of course, Vincent Lombard. Mm, that's right. It's really uh, got worldwide attention, reactions uh, from across uh, the, the world's media and uh, uh, on social media as well. This is Belgium's Le Soir. Now, um, you see, each country has its own kind of arrangements when it comes to euthanasia. And in Belgium, they're very unequivocal about it. You have there's a right to die. Euthanasia is uh, le legislated for. And they're looking across the border to France and they're saying this whole Vincent Lambert thing, it's really a French tragedy. Because in France, it's not quite so clear. Uh, uh, the law bans euthanasia here but uh, it allows for treatment to be stopped. So it's, it's a sort of a grey zone that this case has really sort of, uh, I suppose, underlined, if you like, as, as being perhaps, uh, you know, that the French law needs to be tweaked in this regard. Uh, lots of different people reacting. Uh, this is uh, uh, one, uh, one, um, one particular doctor uh, who is the president of the European Forum on Bioethics. He says that this, uh, he's denouncing a, hip a hypocritical situation here and uh, saying that uh, Vincent Lambert's death was a tragedy. Uh, this is... Um, uh, the head of palliative care at a hospital in Besançon in France, he says Vincent Lambert uh, was not actually uh, dying. Uh, so the, 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 there is a grey zone uh, in, in regards uh, the, the, all of this and, and the fact that his treatment was stopped uh, nine days ago. He, he thinks that uh, this was a, a faulty or wrong decision. Uh, and this is another uh, um, doctor in palliative care uh, who has been speaking to Le Parisien saying, look, the French law when it comes to the end of life covers 99% of situations, but of course that leaves 1% of situations and that's pretty much what happened in the Vincent Lambert case. Lots of reactions as well on social media, really depending on where you are positioned on this ethical question. Caroline Forest, who is a feminist writer and very much in favour of the right to die, she says his long torture has been brought to an end finally. So she's sort of uh, quite happy uh, about this. Jean-Luc Romero, who is a uh, a well-known activist in France as well for uh, LGBT rights and also the rights for end of life. He said this long uh, suffering for 11 years has now been brought to an end. All of my thoughts are with him and his wife and his family. Of course, this was something that divided his family right down the middle. And he says we need to legislate to ensure that everybody takes responsibilities in this regard. Vincent Lambert had not written down what his wishes were and then it was left up to interpretation as to whether or not he would have wanted uh, to be kept in this prolonged vegetative state. France does not execute its worst criminals. France execu execute its most, executes its most vulnerable and its innocent. This is somebody who thinks that this was a form of execution because his food and water supply was stopped. Uh, and uh, this is an African activist also who is uh, uh, for the right to live, if you like. She in, in, does not uh, agree with euthanasia. And this is her very strongly worded uh, tweet here. Vincent Lambert has been killed. I'll finish with Pope Francis, who also chimed in on this. Uh, the Catholic Church taking a very strong position against any equivocation in this regard, saying that, that the risk here, actually it was the risk uh, identified also by one of the palliative doctors, is that uh, you could have people in uh, sort of uh, handicapped, severely handicapped states who might, uh, you know, there could be a drifting towards just turning off the life support if it's seen as too costly or not worth it. In which case, I suppose from th those who, from the point of view of those who defend the right, uh, the, defend the value of life, that is to diminish uh, the value uh, of life from an ethical standpoint. It's an issue that continues to very much divide across the board, James. Let's move on to another story also here in France, and this is the unfolding scandal over the lavish dinners that we, uh, that were revealed actually yesterday the Environment Minister, François de Rougy, and they were held at the taxpayer's expense. That's right. Now, um, Angélique Chrysafis of The Guardian put this one well. The French Environment Minister argues that dinners of giant lobster and 500 euro vintage wine were crucial for staying in touch with civil society. <laughs> Awkward after months of anti-government protests over inequality in which politicians were called out of touch. This kind of puts the finger on it, really. Uh, basically, these, this was the photo on the right of, this was a real photo from one of these uh, lavish uh, dinners at the Hôtel de la C, the official residence of, residence of the President of uh, the National Assembly. That was his previous role. Here is a left-wing politician tweeting her meal today, which was a little slice of quiche with some puree. And she said, the dinner, the meal of Mathilde Penot, that's her, and the meal of François de Rougy. So this is about the optics. It's about the impression that it creates with the public at a moment when uh, there is austerity, austerity measures in place. And 
you know, the details of renovations that took place on his uh, on his personal uh, on his official residence. Uh, you know, for example, a dressing room that cost seventeen thousand euros are really not going down well at all. Now he was summoned to the Prime Minister's office today. That's a, the headline isn't coming up on that particular uh, web page. And essentially, this is a, f a file photo. It makes it look like he was summoned to the principal's office. <laughs> but he did say that, uh, you know, for, for anything that might be contentious, any uh, he, that they would go through everything, all of the costs of everything these lavish be meals, yeah. and that he would be prepared to pay from his personal expenses anything that might be deemed uh, in a grey zone. Now, this morning, at some function that he was heading to, this is what greeted him, a big inflatable lobster. Uh, so the lobster looks like it's now going to just uh, plague him for the rest of his political career, however long that lasts. Uh, the lobster, Omar, as let them eat cake, writes Matthew Fraser, is becoming a symbol. Very bad timing in the wake of the Gilets Jaunes protest. So I think a lot of people coming up with, uh, with that particular remark and a lot of people, you know, the, the lobster is now is becoming a trope across social media uh, that is uh, anything but helpful for um, media part reveals the the kind of chateau lifestyle at the cost of uh, at the taxpayers' expense of the Rougey couple, and this is a a French slogan to to kind of it refers to an old uh, crime story. Look, uh, the 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 the, um, the the lobster has killed me. In in any case, I won't I won't unpack that entirely. But so many uh, details about this coming up on social media. People also putting it in the context of previous scandals last summer. Uh, so this it looks like this could be a scandal that will dog. Uh, not just François de Rougy, but maybe the government. He said, he used the expression, j'assume, in other words, I completely own everything that happened. I don't, uh, I don't uh, think that I did anything wrong. So you can see here people kind of, you know, putting uh, <laughs> images of the Moe and Chandon champagne on tap. In other words, it, it's, it's an image of decadence that doesn't go down well at all. You also have people who were invited to these lavish dinners speaking to the press saying, actually, you know, he, he's explaining them away as working dinners. I was at these dinners. It was kind of an assembly of people who weren't that important. They were friends, really, of the couple. And if I had my time over again, I wouldn't go. That's also Jean-Michel Appetit also saying he regrets having gone to these meals. Uh, you know, people saying he should stand down. This smacks of behaviour of the kind of fan de regime, fan de... That, 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 uh, that saw uh, the revolution, the French Revolution, uh, at the time of Versailles. So lots of, lots of uh, people angry about this. And there has been a final revelation. It See? doesn't end there. It doesn't. Uh, this is only in the last hour or so, after he was summoned to the Prime Minister's office, after he had to eat humble pie, uh, after it was revealed that he fired his own uh, chief of staff, because she had held on to a social uh, socialising for a number of years. Uh, so, uh, as I said, there's many aspects to the scandal. It has now been revealed by Mediapart, the media behind all of these revelations, that he also has a social housing apartment uh, that he has held on to in the, near the city of Nantes since 2016. That could be Shana, Shana, the coup de grace. We'll if this doesn't see. make the French government look closer at the spendings of these ministers, I don't know what will, James. Thank you very Indeed. much for taking a look at what's buzzing online for us. and. Uh, Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More news coming up with me and the team in two minutes' time.